This is the lock picking lawyer, and as many of you know, I recently moved to a new home. And whenever you move to a new house, one of your priorities should always be to either rekey or replace all of your exterior locks. Now, you may think that a lock enthusiast like me would have doors with super high security pick resistant locks, but the reality is that high security locks are very, very expensive. I could easily spend a couple thousand dollars on all of my doors to this house. And that usually doesn't make a lot of sense in your average residential home where there's lots of ground floor windows, doors with wooden door frames that could be kicked in, all security vulnerabilities that are far more likely to be taken advantage of in a break-in than picking. That said, I also don't want a lock on my door that could easily be picked by a novice. So what I'm going to do is show you how I took the quick set that was on my front door and made it very, very pick and bump resistant. And I'm going to be able to do this in less than five minutes and using less than $1 worth of regular commercially available parts. First, let me show you the parts that I am going to be using. I have them set up in my pinning tray. We're going to be using five T-pins that are made for Schlage F-series compressible cylinder locks. You can usually buy a pack of about a hundred of them for roughly six dollars. We'll also be using five master wafers. They're also readily available, extraordinarily cheap, and in this application the thickness of them really is not critical. Now let's take the lock apart and I'll show you how we're going to implement these parts. As I'm taking this apart, I should note that this is not an original idea. I've seen other people do this in the past. And in fact, there is a commercial implementation of this that's no longer made and it's called the Heinz key system. Okay, let's open this up. Okay, if we look at this cylinder, you can see that there are a number of holes right here for construction cane, and those are going to be very, very important to what I'm going to do. You'll see they're on the right side of the pin chambers, and on my front door, you have to rotate the core um, counterclockwise to unlock the door. And that means that these construction keying holes are in the perfect location. What I'll be doing is placing a master wafer over each of the first five pin chambers. And then I will insert one of these T pins in with the narrow end facing down, such that if you use the key and the master wafer is outside of the cylinder, this T-pin will just glide over these construction keying holes. However, if you pick the lock, it will be extraordinarily difficult to get all of the master wafers above the shear line, which means when you turn the cylinder, these T-pins will drop into the construction keying hole and seize the lock up. Now what that means is this lock cannot be used again until you disassemble it from the inside of the house. That means you'll have to go in through another door or the other option would be to drill it out. That does two things. First, it keeps someone from picking into your front door and it also makes it very, very apparent if someone has tried to get into your door. The downside, of course, is that you can't get in that door anymore. Okay, so what we'll have to do is drop out the first five driver pins and springs. Okay, I think I've got all of them out. And we will replace each of them with a T-pin with the narrow end facing up. So we just put the one in chamber five. Here's our one in chamber four. Chamber three. And since we're a little closer to the front of the cylinder here, let me zoom in so you can see it a little bit better as we do the front two. Your 
use chamber two. Okay, and number one. Now we're going to go back to our core here, and in each of the first five chambers, I'm going to drop one of these master wafers on top of the key pin. Okay, now all we need to do is put all of this back together. As I'm doing that, I should note that this is not actually the lock that I'm using on my front door. I would never show you that on a video. This is one that is brand new that I happen to have laying around. Okay, let's get our clip on the back of here. Make sure it works properly. And it does. Now let's see what happens if we try to pick this. Okay, let's get some tension in here. And One's loose, two's loose, three's loose, four, little click out of five, six is certainly binding. Got to click there, back to one, click there. We went to a bit of a false set. Nothing on two, three, four, another click out of five, click out of one, two, three, Four. Not sure what's holding us up here. Hmm. Okay, there we go. I wasn't pressing number one up quite enough. Now you can see we have picked this open and on any other lock we would be able to turn it and unlock the door easily. However, on this one, you can see we just dropped all the pins there and this can no longer be opened. So if I were to come home and see my lock in this position, I would know someone tried to pick into my front door and that they were stopped. I of course would have to go in through another door and disassemble the lock set from the back um, probably after I called the police. So that's my little trick for making a quick set highly pick and bump resistant. If you do have any questions or comments about this, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.